Which of the following ports are used for file transfers? Choose two. Is it A, port 20? Is it B, port 443? Is it C, port 993? Is it D, port 80? Or is it E, port 21? And we have to choose two answers. You now have five seconds. And the correct answers are port 20 and port 21. These ports are used for the FTP or file transfers. The incorrect answers are port 443 because it's being used by HTTPS and this port is used for secure web browsing communication. Port 993 is used for IMAP Secure and port 80 is being used by Hypertext Transfer Protocol or HTTP. Okay, so let's jump to our second question. And the next question states, you would like to troubleshoot a desktop computer that beeps during the boot process and the screen remains dark. Which of the following would be the best next troubleshooting step? Is it A, document the findings? Is it B, check the results? Is it C, establish a theory? Or is it D, implement a solution? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Establish a theory. Please take your time to learn the six steps of the CompTIA troubleshooting methodology. And this is the methodology. The first step is to identify the problem. The second step is to establish a theory of probable cause. The third step is to test the theory. Fourth step is to establish a plan of action and implement the solution. Step five is to verify the full system functionality. And the step six is to document the finding. Okay, so let's jump to our third question. The question states, John, the network admin would like to connect five offices together that are located in different countries. Which of the following would best describe this type of connection? Is it A, NAT? Is it B, LAN? Is it C, SAN? Is it D, PAN? Or is it E, WAN? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is WAN, or Wide Area Network. This usually connects locations over a long geographical distance, for example, a connection between two cities or countries. A LAN is being used in order to establish a connection that is being used in your building or home. A PAN is considered to be a network designed for a small area, and it is usually being used for, to pair Bluetooth devices such as headsets and speakers. And the NAT, or Network Address Translation, is used to change the source or destination IP address as it travels the network, and it is usually configured on a router. Okay, now let's jump to our fourth question. And the question states, you are at your office and you are trying to print a document on your laser printer, from a specific application. When you verify the laser printer, everything seems to be in good working order, but when you are trying to send a print job, there is no output. All of your other colleagues are able to print on the same device without any issues. Choose from the following list your next best troubleshooting step. Is it A, unplug your printer? Is it B, restart your computer? Is it C, restart the printer spooler? Or is it D, verify that the correct printer has been selected in the application? You now have five seconds. So the correct answer is D, verify that the correct printer has been selected in the application. We already know that the printer is working properly because your colleagues are able to print to that same printer. That would mean that also the printer spool is working properly, queuing the print jobs. Unplug your computer or starting your computer will not solve this issue. According to the CompTIA troubleshooting methodology, the second step is to establish a theory of probable cause. You should always question the obvious. Okay, so let's jump to our fifth question. And the next question states, A desktop computer has been built using an SSD NVMe, the maximum amount of RAM, and the high-end graphics card. Which of the following options would best describe the use of this device? Is it A, a touchscreen kiosk? Is it B, a thin client? Is it C, a NAS device? Or is it D, a CAD CAM workstation? You now have five seconds.
Okay, so the correct answer is D, CAD CAM workstation. A CAD CAM workstation is a device that is used in the design of graphical content and it places a heavy load on the graphics card and the RAM or random access memory. An SSD would also be helpful because it has a very high speed for reading and writing on the storage device. A thin client is considered to be a device that runs on a separate computer across the network, so the requirements are minimal. A NAS device is considered to be a centralized storage facility on the network and normally uses a RAID array to provide redundancy. And the touchscreen information kiosk is an input device housed in a special container that functions through physical touch upon the touchscreen. By simply touching the display screen, users can perform various functions. Okay, so I hope I managed to make everything clear. Uh, if so, let us move on to our sixth question. And the question states, you have just purchased time on a cloud-based service that only offers you a hardware platform. Which of the following options would best describe these services? Is it A, SaaS? Is it B, PaaS? Is it C, IAAS? Or is it D, NAS? You now have five... Okay, so the correct answer is C. Infrastructure as a Service, or IAAS, provides services such as pay-as-you-go storage, networking, and virtualization. The service gives users cloud-based alternatives to on-premise infrastructure. The incorrect answers are SaaS, or Software as a Service, because this cloud model only provides on-demand software. You as the user are not responsible for any ongoing management for hosting or development. PaaS, or Platform as a Service, is a category of cloud computing services that provides a platform allowing customers to develop, run, and manage applications without the complexity of building and maintaining the infrastructure typically associated with developing and launching an app. And the NAS is a device that is considered to be a centralized storage facility on the network and normally uses a RAID array to provide redundancy. Okay, now let's jump to our seventh question. And the question states, how do we call the process of controlling network access to destination websites based on the URL? Is it A, NAS? Is it B, MAC filtering? Is it C, whitelisting? Or is it D, QoS? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, whitelisting. Whitelisting is a tool used to protect business computer networks. It complements other security measures like antivirus software and firewalls. Whitelisting blocks unauthorized software uh, until it is specifically allowed to connect to the network. A NAS is a device that is considered to be a centralized storage facility on the network and normally uses a RAID array to provide redundancy. MAC filtering is a way to limit access to the network based on the physical address of the device. And the QoS, or quality of service, allows network administrators to set priorities for certain devices or types of traffic, either assigning them high priority to critical traffic or low priority for traffic that does not need high bandwidth at all times. Okay, let's jump to our next question. And the question states, your manager asked you to buy a new 3D printer. What should you consider adding to your order to avoid placing another different order and lose time? Is it A, imaging drum? Is it B, fuser? Is it C, ink cartridges? Or is it D, plastic filament? You now have five seconds. Okay, so the correct answer is D, plastic filament. The plastic filament is used by 3D printers in order to melt the plastic and create 3D objects. The imaging drum is the heart of the laser printer or the copier. It transfers the print image consisting of toner onto the paper. A fuser unit is a pair of heated rollers within the printer that fuses the toner onto the paper that is being printed on. And an ink cartridge is a component of an inkjet printer that contains the ink that is deposited onto the paper during printing. Okay, let us now jump to our next question. 
and the question states, Sarah is working on an important project on her laptop and all of a sudden the displayed image becomes very dim and very hard to see. She tries to adjust the laptop's brightness and cost contrast settings, but it doesn't resolve her issue. Which of the following components is more likely at fault? Is it A, memory modules? Is it B, inverter? Is it C, HDD? Is it D, digitizer? Is it C, the LCD panel? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, the inverter. An inverter is normally used on a CCFL or cold cathode fluorescent lamp display and it converts the DC power to AC power. If the laptop had a bad inverter, then the information on the screen would be almost impossible to read because of the um, missing backlight. A faulty memory module will normally cause the system to reboot or cause operating system errors. Uh, with the HDD failure, you would be hearing strange clicking or grinding noises from the drive itself. Uh, and an LCD or liquid crystal display screen, uh, it doesn't produce any light. Most LCD displays use LEDs or CCFL as a backlight. Okay, and now for the last question. And the question states, which of the following devices will most likely be using an 802.11 connection? Is it A, a hub? Is it B, a switch? Is it C, a WAP? Or is it D, a bridge? You now have five seconds. Okay, so the correct answer is C, a WAP. <clears throat> a wireless access point, or a WAP, is a device that bridges the 802.11 wireless network together with a wired Ethernet network. A hub is a device that connects multiple Ethernet devices together, but it cannot communicate over the wireless connection. A switch provides connectivity for wired Ethernet devices and allows for additional network configurations and monitoring options. And the bridge is a class of network device that's designed to connect networks at OSI level 2, which is the data link layer of a local area network. Okay, guys, this is the end of our practice exam. I cannot stress enough how important it is to memorize the CompTIA troubleshooting methodology and the well-known ports and protocols. Make no mistake, there will be questions about the troubleshooting methodology as well as the ports and protocols. You will pass your exam on your first attempt. It is not as difficult as other people make it. Probably the most important thing is to take your time and read the questions carefully. Don't rush. Most people fail because they didn't understand the questions in the first place. CompTIA are notorious for phrasing very long questions, but if you read it carefully, you will realize that the questions can be reduced to a very small and simple one. That ends our video for today. Please subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. If you would like more similar content, please let me know in the commentary section below. I hope that you find this video helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.